Hey guys, Rick with Rick's Toy Room, and it has been a while since we did anything 3D printing or talk about 3D printing. So I wanted to show you the new project and venture that I've been on with the 3D prints. So if you notice over my shoulder, there is a new Batman neon sign. No, I did not buy it. I made it. So here is one of the other ones I just finished tonight. This was a 3D printed shell. Everything was extruded to specification for the neon LED lights. Um, I then did my own wiring, got it connected, and that's what it looks like. Originally when I was designing these, um, I wanted a much cleaner look where the AC adapter would be here and you'd only have one little wire coming down from the neon light. The problem was I'm having issues with my, uh, essentially with the fact that I'm using the Adventure M5 and it has a very small build plate. I maxed out the build plate to get the biggest neon sign that I could make. So it's hard to build a shell for the neon sign that the DC adapter fits into. Um, the projects themselves are not hard. Here's another one that I did for one of my coworkers. He's been asking me for something LA Dodgers printed in a while. I decided today this would have been a really cool project to test out as well as I think he's really gonna enjoy it. Um, and I'm getting really much, much better at my keyholes. Um, but so what do these things take? So first you need PLA, you need a design, you need to, um, I've got measurements very specifically for this brand of neon lights. Um, but you do your design, get your tracks, make your holes to feed all your wires, get your EL or your neon LEDs in, splice it, solder to them, plug them in, and that's what you get. I'm gonna kill the actual uh, room light right now so you can see how bright these things are. I did not hook up a dimmer, which hindsight 2020, um, I probably should have ordered a batch of them. I'm not, um, like I was trying to keep the project super cheap and we're gonna go into pricing here in a little bit. So I skipped the dimmer switch. Really probably should have got one because these things are bright. I'm gonna turn off the light, show you Batman, then I'm gonna plug in the LA, and then I'll come back and finish talking. So that's with no other light in the room. Well, the printer, but. Now here is the LA Dodgers. Then, I mean, these things light up a room. They are no joke. Um, I mean, they're super bright. You do not want to stare at them, which is a good thing because I've actually blown a couple of the uh, diodes in these. So um, when you look at them, you can actually see it. In this one, I actually snapped it, trying to bend this wire here. I lost this LED. And then the way that I design my tracks and my frames, um, I I don't, I need to go back and watch a couple of videos for some other guys that did these because they've got a couple different techniques that they did for wiring them. I wired them directly to the ends of each of the wires. So that means I had to basically feed them, had to feed them down and move some of the space here to get the, uh, the wires to fit. And by doing so, I lose basically an entire diode. This particular brand of neon LED lights has a very wide gap between cutting the uh, wire and losing LEDs. So I lost, uh, I've, on all of these, you'll see where on the solder job in or out. So like when the wires come out, you see a section that's a little bit darker here, a little bit darker here, because I had to remove the LED to get the wires down. And um, you just lose, like I said, you lose some real estate here. Cost of the project. So a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, if you were doing like, hey, you just wanna do one neon sign, it's gonna be a little expensive. Um, well, I guess not. So you can do one neon sign with the roll of the LED neon lights for about 20 bucks. The problem is that's not super like cost effective, especially considering that once you do one of these, I mean, this is only about 10 and a half inches wide. So, and then this is only about eight inches tall because of the build plate, like I said, on my 3D printer. Um, if you have a bigger build plate, you can build it bigger and use way more neon. Um, but because of my smaller size, I was able to actually get three Batman lights out of one roll. Now, 
that's great, right? Because 17 bucks or 18 bucks for one roll of neon, you get three lights, that really brings them down to about $6 in neon. Not exactly, because you only get one DC adapter, so I had to order a whole new DC adapter or extra DC adapters. These are another five bucks. Um, the You only get one barrel plug with the actual roll that you order, so I had to order a pack of uh, barrel plugs, which really they're only 80 cents for 10 of them. Or I'm sorry, $8 for 10 of them, so it made them 80 cents a piece. Um, I needed more 22 gauge wire. And then, yeah. and then um, I ordered all the different colors. Now, you can absolutely get a multi-color, remote controlled, dimmer controlled, neon LED rope light. The problem is, I'm not building neon signs right now that have that kind of requirement, right? I'm doing a Batman sign. It's going to be yellow. There's no reason for me to buy a multicolor light when it's only going to be yellow. Now, again, the built-in dimmer probably would have been a good... Oh, well. Um, so, if you think about all the extra parts, you can get the signs from about, I mean, about 25 bucks, 18, 25 bucks for a single build. Mm. After taxes, shipping, free Amazon Prime. So a $22 for one single sign. If you size it where you can get multiple signs out of the box, plus the extra parts, uh, they're still about, still about $18 a sign, which really is not bad. I mean, I've seen Spencer's is selling some of these for like 50 bucks. And I'm like, dude, 50 bucks for, you know, a couple hours worth of work. Now nah, I'm good. I'll, I'll build my own for 20 bucks. Uh, build time was kind of extravagant, right? So uh, the LA Dodger sign took me about an hour and a half to model, uh, mostly because I had to make sure I filleted all the corners to try to keep from bending and snapping the, uh, the LED light strips. I think the Batman took me about, honestly, about 35 minutes. And only because I was messing with some of the filleted corners. Um, I was trying to build that enclosure. I was trying to like, engineer like a case uh, and also I was working on my keyholes I'm not very good at these yet so uh, I was practicing that um, but yeah so I did two out of the three Batman signs I completely smoked the extra uh, LED rope light I had to finish the third Batman so that's not going to happen um, took me about two and a half hours to print each of the actual frames that the neon goes into. Um, I measured mine out so that I think the, the LED light, rope light is about 12 millimeters in actual thickness. And what I did was I measured this out so that I could get the neon to sit above the frame. Because I wanted that to be very prominent, be right out there. Um, and it gives it that old school neon look. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of like that plexi neon though i think i may have to go that route for a friend of mine's uh a friend of mine's sign that she wants um but yeah so all said and done like i said about two 35 minutes to that one i learned a couple of really cool tips on youtube on making these like tracks it was a lifesaver banged out the actual track for the la one in like 10 minutes and they're just going in and fixing some stuff and keyholes etc um so about let, let's just say an hour to build the frame to first model it now that they're modeled obviously i'm saved i'll kick them out uh printing two and a half hours each frame the soldering the soldering was a nightmare um again the way these are designed you have to cut back the rubber sheathing to get to the neon uh the the neon uh, rope light the way that i did it i did not add the extra track so there's a couple guys that show you how to do this and they have a sec or a second set of track that runs inside the frame and what it does is it allows you to run the uh it allows you to run the cables underneath the neon now honestly i kind of think i should have done that because one, it'll help get rid of some of these gaps. Two, it gets rid of some of the dead spots. I could have ran the neon all the way to this edge, um, knowing that I tapped the solder points way back here and had a whole track to run underneath. 
Um, as I do these more, I'll get better at it. Um, I'll look at some of the designs to see if it really is worth it or just leave a couple of the dark spots. Who cares? Um, I, th I want to say the soldering, like I said, was probably one of the biggest problems. And just cutting that sheathing back and soldering onto those little spots, um, difficult. Uh, I shouldn't say difficult, just cumbersome. Uh, it was very hard to keep the sheathing out of the way, get the solder. Like, I don't have a set of the, you know, solder tool extra hands, which I need to invest in. But um, I think each sign took me about an hour to hour and a half to wire up. And like I said, when I did the two Batmans, I had to, uh, I was testing them along the way. And that's why I found out I screwed up the third one. So that took me some time to fix. This one I actually messed up. Luckily, I had enough extra uh, rope light to complete it in one run. So I got that one survived. That one survived. Uh, the LA Dodgers, I tested it all the way through the outside. And then when I did the inside, trying not to snap the diodes like I did. Uh, I'm hoping Halo will not take me that long. Halo luckily is like a, basically a giant U with a little circle in the middle. So that should hopefully be a fast wiring job. I'm going to do some photos on Instagram and Facebook at that one when I'm finished. Um, like, so I've got three of those only ones available. I've already sold one of those and I'm keeping one for myself. Uh, I think the next designs I want to do, I'm looking at the Marvel comics logo, which I don't necessarily know if I will put comics in it. I may just do the red and white Marvel. Um, I'm looking at the green lantern cause I bought green filament. Um, maybe Nintendo, but Nintendo's red on white. So I don't know if I'll do that. Um, with the, other, with the rest of the green, I might do a USF logo. We've got a garage sale going on here next weekend. So I may make a couple USF ones and throw them out on the uh, table to see if they sell. Um, yeah, I don't know. So like I said, I'm looking at lots of different designs. The biggest problem I have with the um, making the neon rope light version of the ne 3D printed neon signs is that my print bed's not big enough to do you know, a nice scale. So it's very hard when you get into things that have like letters and sharp edges at this scale that you're not gonna break the LEDs inside uh, when you're bending the rope. And I mean, this one had me a little bit worried. It looks really good when it got finished. Uh, when it's lit up, it looks phenomenal. Um, but it had me worried and as I look at some of the other neon designs that are out there, I realize a lot of these neon, neon designs these days are Adobe Photoshop. They're like, uh, they're not real neon designs. So they have a lot of details that you would not see in vintage neon signs. Um, plus vintage neon signs, you had, you know, you're running gas through blown tubes versus, you know, you've got a wire you're worried about. So, it's really difficult to find some designs. I looked at some really cool ones. Like I said, a friend wants me to do this one horror sign. It's too big for my print bed. I don't know how I'm going to pull it off. <sighs> There's a lot of intricate edges too. And that's detrimental to the LED neon ropes. Because you bend that, that LED too much, you will snap it. Um... Some of the designs too, like I said, they're just not, they're 3D generated, right? Or I don't know how, I've seen a couple of these guys that made some bigger ones on the Plexi. And it's like, dude, I don't know if I want to put that kind of effort in. Um, I've been looking at Ninja Turtle ones, but either you got to do really, really crappy Ninja Turtle ones, or they're such intricate designs that this particular brand of neon LEDs, again, with the amount of space that you have between cutting the edges i think there's gonna be a lot of dark and dark out spots with all those fine details so um i need to find a better led neon rope light for more detailed work if i find a different one i'll let you know for these signs they're great like i said batman's good the halo's good the dodgers is good we'll see what we're going to come up with next my next venture, I think, is going to order a sample of EL wire. Now, EL wire is super thin. Um, it actually is a phosphor-coated copper wire inside color-tinted rubber sheath. So, uh, 
you're not actually buying an individual color, you're buying a color-coded sheath that the phosphorus is lighting up from inside when you run electricity through the copper wire. The other thing, like I said, it's very small. It's used for like clothing and uh, stuff like that. My concern is going to be, would it look good in a neon sign? A whole point of the neon sign is these thick like edges, like these thick lines. It has that very vintage look to it. Uh, the EL wire, I think, is going to be too thin. It would allow for much smaller neon signs, like battery-operated uh, like badges or little desk lamps, um, stuff like that. I'm going to order a batch in a couple weeks, test it out to see what I can do with it. It would allow for a lot more intricate design because you can just daisy chain them. You, and it's very simple. Snip it, pull back the copper plating, solder the copper to copper, solder the ground to ground, move on, done. You can run it behind the, you're not going to see it. Um, yeah, I want to test it. I'll let you know how that goes. But for now, be on the lookout for more of these neon signs. Um, I'm going to throw the bat, the extra Batman up on Etsy. And if it doesn't sell, it'll be in the garage sale. Same thing with the extra Halo. That'll be on my Etsy, Etsy shop. And then the USF I'll probably throw in the Etsy shop. The, um, I'm not going to do the Dodger one just because I only did this for a friend. Uh, but any of the other ones I do, like I said, the Green Lantern, I'm going to do a lot of superheroes. I saw a really cool um, Spider-Man one I might try. Um, I think it looks really sweet. It's kind of that uh, black suit Spider-Man, Venom, Venomized, like it's that very thin layer spider. So um, I think that's going to look really cool in neon. I will, uh, I'm going to attempt to sketch that one out and see what it looks like. I'm going to put all the sketches up on my cult shop. So if you want to download the sketch and then just run your own wires, you have the ability to do that. I will link those in the description below. I'm going to put the LA Dodgers, the Batman, and the Halo up. And then as I finish more sketches, I'll put them up. And then between that, on the Cults page, I'll link all of the parts I used. Same thing with this video. I'm going to link all the parts. And then if you have questions on the diameters, etc., and what I measured out, how I did it, let me know. And maybe I'll do another video for that. But hopefully you guys like that. Hopefully you guys hit Etsy and buy up some uh, LED neon lights and we'll see what's up next with the next set of 3D prints. As always guys, like, subscribe, share, follow. Let me know what you think and we will do more videos just like this. Later.